Good morning, gentlemen. There's a bright sun outside. It's very hot. Temperatures going to about 35 degrees. But I'll still talk, I'll talk to you about something of great importance, and that is Rajiv Gandhi's visit to America. But before I say anything, uh, let me digress a little from history and tell you that India has always been a land of traitors. That's very uh, outlandish remark to make. But if you look at history, the British ruled India for 200 years and were cursed the Maharajas and the Rajas who were backing the British Raj, like Maharaja of Patiala, Hyderabad, they're all pro-Britishers, including the Maharaja of Kashmir, who had been gifted a kingdom by the British. Then even before that, in the Mughal rule, there were lots of Hindus who were fighting along with Aurangzeb. In fact, if you recollect, Aurangzeb's most famous general, I think, uh, Raja Jai Singh, he was the man who defeated Shivaji in the Battle of Surat. Then we had even Akbar having all sorts of Hindu generals in his army. And let me tell you, gentlemen, that when Muhammad Ghazni came to India in 17 campaigns, he carried along with him a regiment of Hindu soldiers. Now, this will be a bit of a revelation to you. But the fact is, India has always had people who will betray the country. Even Prithviraj in his famous battle with Ghori was betrayed by Jai Chand. And then we had Nawab Shirajudala being betrayed by Mir Jafar when overnight this gentleman went and joined Robert Clive just before the Battle of Plassey. And later on, the Nawab was executed. Well, gentlemen, India became independent in 1947. But the sad part, and I like to bring to you notice that Mahatma Gandhi, I mean, the great man, I like him. But he earlier on was also a supporter of the British Raj. You can't deny that. He was awarded the Kesare Hind the highest award for an Indian and it was conferred on him by the King of England. Even uh, Rabindranath Tagore wrote Janagana Mana basically in honor of King George. Well, he denied it later, but that is a fact. When King George came to India, this Janagana Mana was sung in his honor. So now we have the similar sort of situation continuing after 47. Rahul Gandhi is a scene of a very illustrious family. Uh, he is a descendant from Jawaharlal Nehru, who was the first Indian Prime Minister and uh, a titan as far as uh, India is concerned of a freedom struggle against the British. So one expected better from him. But this man hasn't taken any higher degree. I think he couldn't complete it or he failed. God knows what happened. I will comment on that. But the point is, he seems to be hungry for power. He has been used to so much of power because when Sardar Manmohan Singh, the stooge of uh, Sonia Gandhi was the Prime Minister, this man had a heyday. He had enjoyed himself. He would take an ordinance, tear it, throw it away, and Manmohan Singh would be standing with folded hands. All the videos are available. You can have a look at them. So, gentlemen, this man is used to power. He doesn't know how to earn power, how to win power in the confidence of the people. And he can stoop to any level just to come to power. So he denigrates Narendra Modi. He denigrates the BJP. He denigrates Hindutva, which is the core essence of Hindu policy. And he does a lot of other things, you know. And he is drumming up support abroad so that the Americans and the British can oost Narendra Modi like they boosted Imran Khan in Pakistan. But there's a lot of difference between Imran Khan and here, India. And it's not going to be easy to boost Modi. And perhaps the Americans have realized it. He went to England and made all sorts of, I was just use one word, silly statements against the Indians, the Indian constitution, against everything, against Modi. So people castigated for him, uh, castigated him for it, and many thought that he has learned his lesson and now he will not do anything like that. But I'm afraid he's again on the wrong track. And from my reports, which I'm getting from America, his recent visit to America is an attempt to pander to Muslim sentiments. Now, this is mark my words. I'm not making a statement which is just ideal. 
First of all, let me tell you, we went to California recently, where he had a meeting. About 1,200 seats were there in that thing, and we were told that they were all sold out. But when the meeting took place, only about 400 people turned up, and where the 800 were, we don't know. So it shows he was not all that popular. That's one. Secondly, in one of his meetings, Janagana Mana was being sung, and 60 personal audience was not rising from their seats. And probably he noticed it and others noticed it, and the Janagana Mana was switched off, and announcements were made that there is a mic problem. Well, now why should it be? Why do those people did not stand up for the Janagana Mana? Because they were all Muslims. Now, there are certain Muslim organizations in America who are following uh, Rahul Gandhi's trip, like the ancient days, you know, the bandwagon used to go playing and the wagons used to follow. So, all of them, there are the Indian Muslim associations. You can get them on the net. There are six of them. I think there are plenty of them. They are the ones who are championing Rahul Gandhi's visits. And some of them have a connection with terrorist organizations. It's a very sad thing that a descendant of Jawaharlal Nehru should be involved in all these things. And yet, this man has not learned his lessons. And uh, maybe, you know, he's got a shot in the arm with a victory in Karnataka. And he thinks everything is going to be the same way. And he'll win in Rajasthan. He'll win in uh, Madhya Pradesh. And then he'll win at the centre and become the Prime Minister. And once... God forbid, if it does happen, he's already given enough indication that he's going to restore everything which was pre-BJP. That means he'll bring back the Article 370, he'll undo the Union Territory, he'll do so everything, you know, which is what the BJP is trying to unravel. But, gentlemen, my reading of the situation is, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. I will say that to Rahul Gandhi. I will say that to Rahul Gandhi. हिंदुस्तान का तख्त पाने के लिए आपको बहुत मेहनत करनी पड़ेगी आपको शो करना करे करने पड़ेगा कि आप पेट्रियट हैं हिंदुस्तान के और मेरे हिसाब से बहुत से लोग हैं इंडिया में who feel that he is not a patriot in the true sense he denigrates the hindus wherever he goes he denigrates the indian government see when you are out of india modi is your prime minister you have to stand by him you can't keep criticizing him all the time and then using all foul words against him for which he has been sentenced two years in jail. I think uh, he's the first man who used such foul language and now he has been sent for two years in jail and he's running around here and there. And he's got, his passport was seized. But I, that's also a mystery because I'm told uh, by very confident sources that he got three passports. But probably the Modi government didn't want to open the lid, so they let him go. He's got a passport, new one for three years, and he's using that to go to America. Now, he's going to go to New York also, and there also he's going to address the thing, and uh, he, again, the organizations who are going to sponsor his visit are the Indian Muslim organizations, and some of them have membership of the Pakistani Muslims huh. also. So his game plan is now becoming very clear. He wants to woo the Muslim vote on a national scale and then look for a fringe Hindu vote so he can come back to power. Two plus two always don't add to four. That's what Rahul Gandhi has forgotten. Something else is going to happen now. I think 2024 is going to be his Waterloo and that will be the end of Mr. Rahul Gandhi. He may win in the states here and there. Uh, that is in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, really that doesn't concern me. What concerns me is the national election. And in that election, he is bound to lose. For the simple reason that people have realized that this man is a double-faced man. He's got something else, he talks something else, and he's betrayed the tradition of his ancestor, Jawaharlal Nehru. That is the fact. Because all said and done, you can't pin anything on Jawaharlal Nehru. He was not a patriot. He was a patriot. Well, he had his faults. He had his blind spots. He was blind to the Muslims. He was blind to China, blind to Pakistan. All that's okay. But nobody can say that he was not loving India. Unfortunately, Rahul has gone on the wrong track. And he's digressed 
from the policy, the thought of what the great Nehru did. I would say great because as per Indian traditions at that time, he has the title great because he brought democracy to India. We don't agree with the type of democracy he brought, but that's part of the game. Now Rahul is going to be in America further and he will then come back. And he's building up momentum with a steam engine running to see that he can seize power in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Last week, gentlemen, as I told you, even if he wins, that doesn't mean he's going to be sitting in the seat of power in Delhi. Because the people now know all about his antecedents, about the way he's going. And I'm sure that there are very good people even in the Congress party and they know that what this man is doing is not correct. His decision to boycott the parliament was another very, very stupid decision. The parliament doesn't belong to the BJP. It belongs to the people of India. In that respect, Rahul Gandhi has insulted the Indian people. Well, gentlemen, small men will remain small men. Great men are great men. And Rahul Gandhi comes in the category of the small men. And he hasn't matured. He's a pretty old man now. He's 52 years old. And uh, that's a ripe old age. He should have mellowed down now, but he hasn't mellowed down. And that's the sad part of it. And he's now running around like a loose cannon, firing here, firing there. And loose cannons also misfire back at you. I hope you remember that. Gentlemen, I have nothing more to add. I hope uh, Rahul Gandhi doesn't have a mishap on his uh, present tour of America. I believe that in one of his meetings, some Sikhs did rise up and say, ask him questions on the 84 massacre, which his uh, grandfather carried out, rather his father carried out on his instructions. The 1984-6 riot, 10,006 being killed, he sidestepped the issue. Well, gentlemen, history is history. It's nobody's friend. And I will close now and say, Jai Hind, glory to India. God bless, take care. Please subscribe to my channel and come back for more. I look forward to your attention. And there are so many peace channels on the net. And all of them write sensational things, you know. And then they get a viewership. I don't say anything that's sensational. I'm a one-man person who writes, speaks out of my heart with pleasure. So I will say, give me the consideration and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye and God bless.